The UCLA Bruins have signed a total of 12 five stars in their program's existence, but just how many of those five stars actually worked out? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into another recruiting throwback video, this time investigating the all-time greatest UCLA recruits. What happened? Did they work out? Were they bust? They were they busts. They signed 12 total five stars in their history, and then 42 total top 100 players. We're gonna go through all the five stars, and guys, it is not pretty at all. Let's go. The number one overall player UCLA has ever signed was actually the number one overall player from the class of 2017. It is Jalen Phillips. I've talked about this guy before. He's from California. He commits to UCLA. And in two years at the school, he was injured. Ten total games. Eight total tackle ta tackles for loss with just four total sacks before transferring out to Miami of Florida where he ends up being a first round pick. When it comes to UCLA, I think you have to consider this recruit a bust. I mean, if you're signing the number one overall player, you're going to expect some major production and all you got was eight total, ta total tackles for loss in two years along with four total sacks in just 10 games his freshman and sophomore year. His great season when he was in college came when he transferred to Miami and he did end up going in the first round of the draft with like the 18th overall pick to the Miami Dolphins where he had a very nice rookie year this past year. But for USC, I would say that's a miss. USC's number two recruit all time, Eddie Vanderdoes from California, the number seven overall player, a defensive tackle, a big hulking guy, top 10 overall player from the 2013 class. You take a look at his career at UCLA. He did spend four years at UCLA, just one game as a junior. His junior year was cut short due to injury, but 13 total tackles for loss with just four sacks through a total of around, looks like, 30 games. That is not five-star top 10 production. He ended up going in the third round of the 2017 draft to the Oakland Raiders, where he played 16 games as a rookie, starting in 13 of them, not too bad, but didn't do much after that. He was then signed by the Houston Texans and appeared in three games in the 2019 season. He didn't start a single game. I would consider him a bust. Not much production at UCLA. This is a top 10 recruit we're talking about, folks. We're expecting him to be a first round pick. It just didn't work out for him. Not, you know, four total sacks in his career. And then he goes in the third round. Not great for the number two overall recruit in UCLA history. The number three overall recruit, Josh Rosen. I think with this one, you have to say it clearly is a hit for UCLA. This kid, the number 11 overall player from the state of California. The number one overall pro style quarterback in his class. He ended up going 10th overall. And he had really nice production at UCLA. He was a three and done his junior season. 26 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. I mean, it's nothing too special. But considering the lack of skill position around Josh Rosen, uh, you have to consider those pretty good seasons. You know, if Josh Rosen was with another program with maybe more skill position talent, uh, he would do a little bit better. But you're the number 11 overall recruit. You have some great moments in college. Of course, we remember that crazy comeback against Texas A&M opening week of the 2017 season. So Josh Rosen is a recruiting hit. We know about his NFL career. Oh my goodness. You know, very tough situation going into Arizona. But at the end of the day, just couldn't play when it when it came to the NFL level. He really couldn't. I mean, the, the, you, it is a tough situation to go into, uh, but he's just not a good. You know, he he cannot translate. Uh, you know, we've seen Josh Rosen at other spots in the NFL. He's just not a starting NFL quarterback. It happens to the best of them. He's not the first, and he won't be the last 
a former five-star prospect to fail in the NFL. UCLA's number four overall recruit in their history is a very, this is a very unfortunate situation from the state of California, Miku Juarez, who was an absolute stud, unbelievable athlete, outside linebacker, tw class of 2016. I'm guessing many people don't even know this kid existed. This is the number 11 overall player, number one overall linebacker from the state of California. Unfortunately for him, he had three concussions, and you take a look at his career at UCLA, three total games. His freshman season, three games, he recorded two total tackles. The number 11 overall prospect, the number one linebacker, they thought they were getting a franchise-changing athletic outside linebacker. This kid was showing out at camps. He was running a crazy 40-time, rangy, modern day, everything you want in you know, a first round, you know, type prospect linebacker. It the, the concussions, it just didn't translate. The last thing I saw on him, it says transfer tracker. Former five star enters the portal. And I'm actually not even sure where he transferred to. Uh, but I don't think he's played anywhere. So when it comes to the number eleven overall player, I'm sure a lot of people don't even know he existed. This is just the class of 2016, so this is pretty recently. You've got to consider him a massive, massive bust. He was not drafted by anyone, obviously. The number fifth overall player in UCLA recruiting history, it's going to be Owagnabi. I'm not even going to try and pronounce his last name, but this kid, the number 17th overall player from Portland, Oregon. So not from California. UCLA gets gets a five-star from Oregon. Class of 2010, he was a pass rusher. You can take a look at his career at UCLA. He played in four years, right? So he's a four-year player, and his overall numbers... He had a very nice senior season, yes, 11 and a half tackles for loss, six sacks, but you take a look at his overall career, in his total career, just 12 and a half sacks for a former five-star prospect, top 20 prospect, I would say that's a little bit underperforming. His NFL career, he didn't start a single game in the NFL. I believe he was an undrafted free agent and play, appeared in a total of 18 games over two years with the New York Giants. He did record one pass defense. So he's got that going for him. But yeah, this is another major bust. Former five-star, decent career at UCLA. Had a nice senior season. But overall, when you're talking about NFL production, you're, it's just, it's not translating. He is a clear bust. Moving on to UCLA's number sixth overall greatest recruit. Keyshawn Lucher South. This is just such the, the typical, you know, five-star bust. Nothing against this dude, but it's just like he's a lengthy pass rusher from the state of California, the number 16th overall player from the class of 2015, and it just did not translate. He actually spent, I believe, a total of five years at UCLA. His true freshman season, he was injured, so he took a redshirt year. And then you know what? He had a very nice junior year with 11 and a half tackles for loss, but over his entire career, just six and a half sacks for, for a former five-star, the number 16 overall player. He went undrafted and has not taken, taken a snap in the NFL. I couldn't even find him on any practice squad in the NFL, so that's another bust you would have to say. I mean, UCLA did get some production out of him, but overall, when you're signing the number 16 overall recruit and he spends five years with your program, you are not projecting him to finish his career with almost more years in your program than total sacks, which is almost what happened, what happened with this kid. It's unfortunate. The next guy, the number seven overall recruit in UCLA recruiting history, Matt Ware, a cornerback from the class of 2001 from the state of California, the number 25 overall player, a five-star, and the number two overall cornerback in his class. This kid, I believe, this is a kid that did have an, a decently long NFL career, 
and he was a three and done. So you can see as a true freshman, he started 11 games, sophomore 13 games, junior 10 games. Not too bad. He had a total of eight interceptions. That is some legitimate production. I believe he went in the third round of the 2004 NFL draft to the Philadelphia Eagles. And you can take a look at his overall pro career. He played a lot of years, but he started three games. You know, 95 total games, just three starts, and overall just seven pass defenses, and just in 95 career games, he had just one interception, so I'm guessing a lot of this was on special teams for Matt Ware, so just not a great pro career. I mean, he stuck around and got a few contracts, that's good for him, but I'd have to say, you know, this is another one I would consider a bust. Right now, I would say you've only got one clear guy at this point, you know, that was a former five-star that went to UCLA throughout his entire career and was a first-round pick, that's Josh Rosen. Can we have any more luck with the eighth overall player in UCLA recruiting history? Ellis McCarthy, maybe one of the most irrelevant modern recruits in history. This kid from the class of 2012, the number 24 overall player. He's a defensive tackle from the state of California, the number four overall defensive tackle in his class. I, I found his college stats. You can see it looks like he was a three and done at UCLA, freshman, sophomore, and junior seasons. Uh, a total of six sacks and just six and a half tackles for loss in three seasons. That is not five-star production. And when I, I looked, because he's a three and done, right? You'd think he'd go to the NFL. I went to try and find his football reference page. It's empty. It's a tumbleweed. There's nothing on him. You take a look. It's an ad. He has no NFL snaps. He has appeared in no NFL career games. Another five-star bust for UCLA. Moving on to their number nine overall player. It's going to be Darnay Holmes. This is a really recent recruit from the class of 2017. The number 22 overall player. He was an athlete slash cornerback, but he's a guy that probably could have played offense as well. You take a look at his overall numbers as a corner. He was a three and done at UCLA. So freshman, sophomore, and junior and then went off to the NFL. Pretty good production. 17 pass defenses, two total force fumbles, and eight total interceptions. So that's very nice production along with three tackles for loss as a corner. Not bad. He ended up getting picked in the fourth round by the New York Giants and has really played a decent amount his first two years in the NFL. He started a total of nine games in two seasons and has two total interceptions. We'll have to see if he can make his name on that New York Giants defense. I'm hoping they give him a little bit, maybe a starting chance next year. But when it comes to being, you know, this is a kid, I think he has untapped potential and I don't think UCLA utilized his potential to his fullest. You'd have to say this is another bust for UCLA just based off of the fact you're the number 22 overall player going in the fourth round. You would, you want a little bit, you want a little bit better, uh, you know, uh, production than that. And moving on to their number 10 overall player, a running back. It is so, so Jamambo, who is was a five-star running back from the class of 2015, the 32nd overall player, the number two overall running back. This kid, it's unfortunate. You take a look, four years at UCLA, a total of just over a thousand yards. He's averaging under five yards a carry. It's not good, folks. It's simply not good. His senior season, he only appeared in three games, had five carries for 12 yards, and he did not make an NFL roster. So that's another bust. Their number 11th overall player. This is another, this is a major hit for UCLA. Mercedes Lewis, who he was a five-star, ranked as the 37th overall player. That's getting pretty low, but he just did make the five-star threshold. The number one overall tight end from the class of 2002, Mercedes Lewis, spends four years at UCLA. Those are really respectable numbers, really good numbers for a tight end back in that era where they barely threw, threw the ball back in the early 2000s. Uh, so really good numbers, 10 touchdowns his senior season, and he parfait, parlayed that 
into being a late first round selection and he's had a very long successful NFL career with multiple million dollar NFL contracts so that's their second major success behind Josh Rosen and then the final five star of UCLA's program history it's going to be an offensive guard very hard to find stats for him Paul Mosiller who was the number 39th overall player from the class of 2000. And I really couldn't find much on him, but I did find a message board where they were talking about the biggest busts in you know UCLA history. And they said, he. it wasn't like he was bad, but he was expected to be more. He did not get drafted. I could not find anything on him when it came to an NFL roster. So he. it is, you know... Fair to say he did not make the NFL. So out of the 12 total five stars on UCLA, you had two first round picks. You, had, I guess if you want to include Jalen Phillips, that's three, but I'm not going to include him because Jalen Phillips became a first round pick by transferring to Miami and then having a great junior season. So out of their 12 five stars, you've got two total first round picks along with a boatload of undrafted free agents, along with a boatload of guys who have never taken a snap in the NFL. But when you move past the five stars, it gets even more bleak. When you just take a look at every single top 100 recruit in UCLA recruiting history, there has been a total of 42 guys that fall within the top 100 that went to UCLA. There's been three first round picks. Anthony Barr is the other one. Anthony Barr, so it's Josh Rosen, Mercedes Lewis, and Anthony Barr. You look at bust after bust after bust after top 100 player after, it is Blake with UCLA. And I like UCLA. I love their colors. But I just thought this would be a cool video to show the lack of success these five stars have had. Where it's not even like, oh, you know, sometimes it's like a Darnay Holmes, Matt Ware situation when the kid at least can be a third or a fourth round pick. It's salvageable. He can go on to have six or seven years in the NFL. Most of these five stars, these kids didn't even play a down. They didn't even make a practice squad. That's how bad it is with some of these kids. And then when you even go further past the five stars, just... Total top 100 players, 42 total top 100 players, three first round picks out of 42 players. Out of 42 players, three turned out to be a first round picks that stayed and played throughout their entire careers at UCLA. Josh Rosen, Anthony Barr, and Mercedes Lewis, who's probably had the most successful career. Maybe Anthony Barr has. Anthony Barr was the number nine overall pick. He's had a successful career in the NFL. Play, had some decent seasons with Minnesota. Uh, but overall, guys, just a fun thing to look back on. Recruiting throwback with UCLA. Uh, make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.